Hi, my name is Mia Grimes. I'm an oil painter based in New York City. I was born in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1978. I think all kids start out as artists. They always draw and I just kept going and my parents kept encouraging me. And they just saw that that's something I wanted to do and they wanted to foster that in me. My parents, I think, were very creative types, but their parents didn't encourage them, so I feel like they were living vicariously through me. I don't. <laughs> I like that you can do a lot of glazes that add a lot of dimension and kind of these beautiful jewel colors and there's a lot of flexibility with blending and taking your time. I'm kind of a slow artist. That gives me an opportunity to, to really spend a lot of time with the painting. Hopefully do a good job with it. Oh my gosh, it varies so much. I hate when people ask that question because it's like, one painting I can do sometimes in four hours. Some I spend months on, you know, here and there in little clips. I usually work at, um, on about five paintings at a time, so it's hard for me to keep track of timelines of how much I spend on a painting. I did, I was in and out of classes, you know, as a teenager, and um, I was in and out of college for a long time because painting was always the thing that I did, but I never thought about it being a career. And I stumbled upon this book, How to Survive and Prosper as an Artist. And I'm like, this is what I've been wanting to do the whole time, and I didn't realize it. A small um, private school in Portland, Oregon. And it was a conceptually based school. Uh, I think that was important, actually, later on, that I could conceptualize my art. It makes, it makes it so that I'm not just throwing some stuff on a canvas that I think might look cool it makes me analyze what I'm doing better. Since I was a little girl, I always liked medieval stuff. I don't know why. Uh, they say that if you have an affinity for a certain time period or a certain place in the world, that in a past life, you were in that world. Um, I don't know how accurate that is. And I just kept drawing medieval stuff and eventually that led to futuristic kind of fantasy. So it's like I do medieval fantasy and futuristic fantasy. Yes, Hieronymus Bosch is probably my very favorite and I really love Botticelli and Caravaggio. She's a New York artist named Patricia Watwood and she does a lot of allegory I think she was a classically trained painter, so you know her results are really beautiful. She can really execute something and still have an interesting narrative behind it. Watching a lot of news, which probably isn't so healthy, but I think it's really necessary, and true crime shows. And when I'm drawing, I like to have a show on that I've already seen, just kind of in the background. Um, there's Mad Men, Sopranos. Game of Thrones is one I always end up using the most. <laughs> I've seen it probably like 20 times. Yeah, I'm, I'm an avid reader. I'm currently reading a historical series of novels by Maurice Drouin. It takes place around you know, 14th century in England and France. Very much so. It's a fairly new gallery. It's called Stone Sparrow Gallery. And it's a lot of realism and surrealism and just stuff that really resonates with the kind of art I do. I think the answer to that is a little bit of both. I think my work is has a very um, subconscious kind of feel to it, if you really look at it and I'm very sensitive to the energy around me. So 
I'll create a piece and without knowing what it's about. And once I finish the piece, I kind of analyze it. And then I'm like, how does this relate to what's going on in society? Afterwards, decide what it's about. And then a lot of times I see that, yeah, that fits in with what's going on in society, even though it doesn't look like it at first. I totally got chills like three times when you just explained that, because I feel like that's totally accurate. I was part of Con Artist Collective, which you ran, and you ran it very well. So ha I had a lot of trust in Joanne Solis, and a lot of my fellow artists were at Con Artist, and they came here. So I really want to be a part of that community. Here's what I wanted to talk about. A consciousness. Okay, so robots are robots, people are people. But if a robot thinks it's sentient, if it thinks it has feelings, if it might feel that it has feelings, does it have feelings? Who are we to decide for the robot? You know? Have you ever had a friend be like, oh, I'm so in love with her? And all his friends are like, no, he's not really in love. He thinks he's in love, but he's not. But if the person thinks they're in love, they're in love. And so you think about the animal kingdom and how animals have consciousness. And that's very fascinating to me. Not just, you know, our consciousness, but the overall consciousness. That's a big part of my more futuristic fantasy painting. And I think it's important to look at because you know, maybe we are reaching the singularity at some point. And is it fair for us to judge if something or someone else has feelings or self-awareness?